Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Welcome back, Sister Mary Grace. Sister Ring Day, good to be back. Let Love podcast for the Sisters of Life. We are in the uh, fourth Sunday of Lent. I'm stretched. And claim it early. Oh my gosh, but sister. Yeah. I am. God is so gracious to us. Like this is a week we see miracles. We see joy. We see we see like oases here in the desert. We got we celebrate St. Joseph. Come on. Spouse of Mary. We're going to celebrate the Annunciation. Yeah. This yes, that got this whole thing started here on this side of the veil. Um, Mm -hmm. And actually, sister, again, this is just before we dive in part of our little intro here. It's like, I think that's what I'm learning this Lent. Uh, I'm learning a lot of things, Good. but <laughs> Me too. one of them is like, you cannot, I actually cannot call the day. Mm. I I never know how God is going to mm-hmm. drop his grace, bring life where there wasn't life, bring mm-hmm. light where I didn't see it before, mm-hmm. heal my blindness, which is like mm-hmm. what this gospel this week is all about. Right. Um, I don't know. Are you experiencing these Lenten miracles in your own? Oh, yeah. Even as you're talking, it's kind of like, it reminds me of like, you know, when I was growing up, I remember playing soccer. Yeah. And then, you know, you get to halftime and you're exhausted. But then like the coach brings over that great big juicy ball of oranges. And it's like the sweetness in the middle of the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the sister. <laughs> like you're revived. You take a seat. I don't know. It's like this feeling too of, of halfway through Lent where it's, there's there's a sweetness in this halfway point that um, is it, like deeply reviving and just and now we have evidence that God has showed up in the desert. Wow. You know we've experienced it even through the journey that we've been on. Um, but there's surprises in the midst of there's a sweet repose. Mm-hmm. There's um, yeah as you say these oasis that give us life in the midst of the journey. Um, yeah, it's exciting. It. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. Or even I was. Um, <laughs> Again, this gospel, we're going to talk yeah. about someone being healed from blindness. But yes. I was recently reading about kind of the latest approved miracle out of Lourdes. Okay. Um, which I guess is like the 60th Muriel, miracle or something like that. Wow. I mean, it's getting up there. Maybe the 70th. I, again, I guess you're going to have to check Google or something <laughs> for the exact numbers. But um, it's from this really beautiful sister, mm-hmm. actually, who had suffered disability Um for a long time and she said she went to lords and she mm. received this blessing she said she she didn't even ask for a miracle wow isn't this amazing cool she didn't even ask and mm. but she went back and again um the details of the story i'll leave you to read about but again describing this this warmth and knowing that something mm. was occurring that was uh out of this world so mm. to speak and then this this voice uh this word to her heart take off your braces and like walk and here she is she's been cured but like wow. this is why i want to frame is like looking out even for the miracles that we we haven't thought to ask for yeah right. that god wants to give mm-hmm. us and this is our gracious god and we're looking at a week ahead in land that yes we're we're kind of like trudging through mm-hmm. we've already uh moved through a few weeks here and we mm-hmm. might be tired or feel discouraged but like look up uh, because God is in our midst, mm-hmm. and um, He's ready to to pour out His grace mm-hmm. to save each of us in a wonderful way. Cool. Um, I don't know, if sister. You want to kick us off with a prayer? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you for for life, for um, the goodness of your life, for your fidelity to us for every good gift that you're constantly pouring out and bestowing upon each one of our particular hearts. We thank you, Father, and we praise you for every good gift, the ones that we see and the ones that we don't always see and recognize. We thank you. We praise you for never failing to take care of us in every single way. And so, Father, we ask, just as we gather together over your word, that you give us a gracious outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Uh, in all the places of our hearts, especially the places we experience the desert. Um, we just welcome you into this place and we ask for the grace of your spirit to help us to pray, to make our hearts sensitive and open to the words that you want to give each one of us. Um, help us to see you. We ask for healing from any blindness in all of our hearts, in any place of our lives that do not see you. We ask for the grace to see you. 
and to believe you and to claim you as Lord here and today. We just ask Blessed Mother that she kind of keep us on track um, and help us to be open always to the movements of the Spirit. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Annunciation, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Amen. Amen. Wow, sister, thank you. Mm. It's beautiful. Well, here we are. Um, rose vestments coming out for this week. Uh, Laetare Sunday. That's right. The collect for Mass. Oh, God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself mm. in a wonderful way. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm. God's wonders. Let's let's look out for God's wonders here in the desert. Yeah. Um, but a beautiful gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder, I think, sister, I, I think I read the last one and it was long. And actually, I think I you think should read this one and it's longer. <laughs> We're, I can't wait to hear the Aussie. We're two and a half pages here. Okay. Give me the gospel, according to John. Okay. About the healing of blindness. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, I can try. Okay. John 9. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me, while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is, but others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How are your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason his parents said, He is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We, we know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, 
you were born totally in sin, and now you are, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard, when Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, "Do you believe in the Son of Man?" He answered and said, "Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him?" Jesus said to him, "You have seen him, and the one you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he." He said, "I do believe, Lord," and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do not see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we were not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying we see, so your sins remain. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. What a journey. <laughs> there is so much here. There he is. It's loaded. Oh my goodness. So much here. The Spirit's got to see us what he wants us to see. Oh, wow, Sister. Yeah. Where do we start? Gosh. Well, I I mean, Sister, even just on this journey together, I mean, the first thing that struck me about this gospel, just in light of where we've been, is just, um, you know, the first couple of gospels we went through together as Lent started, it's like we started on these two mountaintops, right? Um. And we, we had these two mountain experiences. We see Jesus struggle in the desert. We see Jesus, the transfiguration on the mountaintop. Mm. And then we went straight to the depths. You know, we went to the heart of hearts with uh, the woman at the well, where Jesus went into the depths and is uprooting our deepest desires and wants to fulfill them. And then here we have like Jesus passing by on an ordinary day, <laughs> which to me, I'm like, wow, this new context of encounter, uh, which is beautiful and wonderfully ordinary. You know, there's no uh, mountaintop experience. There's no diving into the depths. It's just the simplicity and the grandness of Jesus passing by. And there's a miraculous encounter um, that we see here that's um, surprisingly and wonderfully ordinary. Amen, sister. Like, Jesus passing by. Yeah. Uh, he saw a man blind from birth. Um, again, we can trust that uh, Jesus is passing us by, mm-hmm. right? He sees us. Um, he's with us in this journey of Lent. Right. Yeah, sister, it's uh, pretty awesome, mm-hmm. this reality for all of us, actually, mm-hmm. that um, in our day today, Jesus is seeking us. Uh, hmm. And to think, how is he passing me by? How has he walked by me in these days of Lent? Um, how does he see me, right? Um, and mm-hmm. and notice, actually, what he noticed about this man, his blindness, right? That Mm-hmm. Um, inviting uh, actually this gaze of Christ, but also yeah. acknowledging this beautiful reality. I love this Jesus answering the disciples' question. Um, this is not a fruit of his parents' sin mm-hmm. or of his sin. It's so that the works of God might be made visible through him. Mm-hmm. And I just love this from the get go of this gospel. Mm-hmm. It's like the the word of hope that my blindness. Um, my weakness, whatever it is that I'm carrying, mm-hmm. um, whatever, yeah, right. We're not none of us are perfect. Um, it can glorify God. Mm-hmm. This is not for my woe or for my shame or for my discouragement. Like, this is a place that as I, I welcome the gaze mm-hmm. of Christ, as I welcome Him, um, as He wants to encounter me in the day to day and in yeah. the ordinary things. Um, these places in our lives can be places of glory mm. where God manifests his glory. I wow. mean, by blindness, that, yeah. God can, God wants to reveal himself yeah. really, in a particular way in these places. And I think at this point in Lent, we're more aware of these places, right? Because <laughs> like, we're off of glory. <laughs> there it is. Like, oh, yeah. blindspots.com, right? Okay, yes. I, I see that I'm blind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like kind of ironic, right. but um, a word of hope from yeah. the Lord, um, and a word um, uh, that he's with us. Yeah. And you, I mean, that goes back to the garden. Like, how much of a temptation is is it, like, to immediately go from, yeah, an, a, a difficult experience to <clears throat> immediately, like, you know, um, to the temptation to blame? I don't know. It's like, you know, what what went wrong there? Or why is it that way? Or what's wrong with me? Um, we can be so quick to accuse someone else or even ourselves, really, when we when we fail or come up with our shortcomings uh, and immediately take on this burden that Christ actually never wanted. Um, 
but that as you were saying, these these experiences in our stories are, are moments for glory. I mean, it flips itself on its head that every time I fall or lack or um, come up against a blindness, something I can't fix or handle, um, be not afraid. This is this is the next destination uh, for God's glory to be manifest in my life. And it, it actually reminds me of the line from St. Irenaeus. What is it like? The glory of God is man fully alive. Yes. So it's like his glory in the desert is seeking out where we're half alive. You know, where am I Where am I today kind of lacking or where am I holding on just by a string? <laughs> well, I don't know, in moments where I'm like, ah, I'm not kind of fully alive there. It's like, that's that's nothing to be ashamed of. That's actually the place where Jesus is passing by today. Mm. He's like that. I want to bring my glory right there, um, which is really, really neat. And I love that too, even, I mean, just that first word that you reminded me of, like blind from birth, you know, that it can make us think of, um, you know, often we can think like, you know, Lent 2023. <laughs> Listen, I I have different goals each year, you know, they kind of, and sometimes the same ones keep coming up. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm like, still need to work on that. <laughs> Amen. But I think this gospel too invites us to consider times when we've been with things that we've been tempted to just assume that I will always struggle with this or, you know, from my birth, you know, from far back as I can remember, I'm always going to be that way or um, temptations to think that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things that we've struggled with or that have kind of bound us or kept us back or, um, yeah, kind of prevented us from living fully alive, um, maybe our whole life long. Like here we are in the middle of that and Jesus is like, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in freedom in that place. Uh, that's part of this Lent too, um, which is a good thing at this point to bring to the Lord. Um, is there more that he wants to bring glory to? That's powerful, sister. Mm -hmm. well, as you're speaking, it's like to name those places. Yes. And maybe conversely, it's like, where are you desiring a miracle? Mm -hmm. You know, cool. where are you thirsting? Okay, we're, you know, we're into the desert now. It's like, where are you noticing the ache, the thirst? Um, what do you desire to be healed? Where you, do you desire the light of the world mm -hmm. to come? And yet, too, I would say, as you name those places, are you ready to let him come? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to welcome him? Because I love this. Um, go to wash in the the pool of Siloam. That means sent. Um, mm -hmm. Like, am I willing to be sent um, mm -hmm. by the light of the world? Am I willing to encounter him in that space. And actually what we see happens is like this encounter um, and this healing that he received, he then, he had to claim, he had to claim the Christ and at cost, right. actually, right. like he was almost getting, he was on trial. Yeah, was you know what I mean? Yeah. I, as you were reading it, sister, honestly, I saw Christ in, um, you know, Jesus in his own passion being wow. questioned, right? Um, and they're questioning him. Gosh, um, it says that he was ridiculed. Um, who is he? Who is this? This? What was this encounter all about? Um, hmm. Tell us. And actually, even his parents kind of were like, uh, right. "Listen, we don't want to get kicked out of the synagogue. Like mm -hmm. this, this child is old enough; he can answer for himself." Yeah. Um, and and actually, like, it's a critical time, I think, in Lent. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we want the miracles. Yes, we want the healing. Yes, I want the new life. But am I really willing to open my heart to the change that? That actually, like, Jesus wants to establish um, himself, mm. his kingdom, his reign, mm -hmm. kind of a new law, mm -hmm. this this new law of of his sovereignty, um, of his oh. love. And and it does require, yes, like, um, why could this blind man? He was a beggar, which yeah. means, yeah, he could receive, please God, right? Um, to receive and be sent into something new. Mm. Um, and so... I think it is. I think this gospel really confronts me. Like, yes, I want it. Yes, I have these desires. Um, yes, Jesus, come and do it. But like praying also for the courage to, um, oh my gosh, Jesus, I don't know if I'm, I'm what are you going to do about my weakness? What are you going to do about my fear? What are you going to do about the ways I want to grasp the old ways? Like yeah. um, to cling to him, to look to him. Like, yeah. Uh, to really be willing to actually depend on him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's going to cost. It's going to cost. We're going to have to let go of something yeah. to to claim the new. Yeah. And uh, don't think about it too long. Yeah. Acknowledge it and then pray for the grace to lean in and jump. Yeah. Yeah. 
leap into um, this place of encounter, wherever it is in your heart that Jesus wants to have. That's a good word, sister, because I mean, I don't know about you, but as Lent goes along, like, I kind of recognize more and more places that I need Jesus to come. It's kind of like the weakness gets stronger. (laughs) You know, and it's like, wow, you know, I started off with these goals and now I I realize all these extra things that, wow, you know, I'm kind of carrying a lot or, um, I don't know, you just become more awoken to how much I need the Lord um, and how much of my heart that I desire him to uh, to come and be with me in and, and how many more places that I need his company and his strength. And um, I think that's a beautiful thing, actually, to get to, to at this point in Lent as well, just to see that we might experience the vulnerability growing, yet the, yet the confidence at the same time, too, that there is a new strength found in the desert, that there's a person here that's uh, providing as we uh, wake up to the reality of our weakness that actually is is strangely and and beautifully strengthening because it's more and more of him. Um, which is, yeah, just, just neat. It's powerful. Well, and two, it's like the crown, the crown of this gospel, I think is what holds us in the miracles God Mm -hmm. wants to do in our lives. Um, you see it, Jesus said to him, you have seen him and the one speaking with you is he, right? Yes. Cause, cause he was like, basically like, who is he? Tell me so that I can believe in him. Like there was another encounter, right? Like he was touched by Jesus. He was healed by Jesus. He, he like stood in the truth of what had happened to him. But then you see Jesus, he comes again. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful. It is process. Yeah. To our conversion ultimately. Yeah. And this conversion and what is it sealed with? Um, His act of faith. Mm. I do believe Lord. Mm. And he worshiped him. Isn't that powerful? Yep. I do believe in mm-hmm. being Jesus. Um, and again, to be to be thinking about um, making acts of faith, uh, hmm. and particularly, yes, like maybe you're wrestling in a particular way this Lent, mm-hmm. and Jesus is like giving you a word of hope, and you're wrestling more. Again, like respecting the process of being made new in Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yet I think... Um, Faith is an important disposition. It's an important anchor. Um, faith is what holds us in contact. Like we literally touch God yep. in and through faith. Um, and I would encourage that. Like make acts of faith. Like, hey, Jesus, I want you to do this thing in my life. Um, I was struggling to believe, like help my unbelief. Cool. Hey, Jesus, like I am stuck in cowardice. What do you want to do about that? Like, Jesus, I believe in you. Throw yourself Mm -hmm. um, into faith in God. And we can do that. Like these are acts of of our heart, of our wills um, to to draw your attention to the Father. And and, yeah, let it be done. But asking for the grace of faith in a particular way, Mm -hmm. because you see how critical it is actually to allowing God to to transform us. Mm -hmm. The the transformation that we are looking for in the Mm -hmm. desert. I love that conversation, sister, that you're talking about when Jesus, and like, this is the second encounter, you know, he's gone back to him. And I kind of like this because it makes me think, you know, I mean, sometimes my, the biggest graces I get in prayer outside the chapel, I'm just yes. going to be honest. I mean, yes. literally, I had a staircase grace the other day, sister. Oh, I was like, now this would have, you know, sometimes we anticipate more in the chapel, but I mean, like, literally, I'm coming down the staircase and I'm like, wow, I just let that frustration go. And it wasn't, it just, and I knew that it wasn't just me thinking it and willing it. It was like a grace came as I stepped down that staircase. You know, so it's like being open to these second encounters with the Lord throughout the day in Lent too, that um, yes, we're, we're, we're trying to be faithful to our prayer, but again, being opened to Jesus finding us throughout the day. You know, he wasn't looking for him again. Jesus, Jesus heard that he got kicked out. Wow. He heard he was having a bad day. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, he was having a bad day and what did he do? Jesus came and found him. And gently invites him to this deeper level of faith. And I just, I love that <laughs> this good man calls him sir. You know, you know, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Here is Jesus Christ in, in real flesh and blood before him. And he doesn't recognize him as, as Lord yet. Um, to me, is just such a comfort because what it reveals to us is that Jesus takes, takes ordinary form. You know, it's like he, he's not... He's not coming with lights blazing at all times in our life. You know, that he's um, he's taking ordinary form 
uh, and he finds us where we are, uh, and he invites us to this to this deeper act of faith. And but also too that um, yeah, that we have seen him. That from the day of our baptism, he has been speaking to our sister. He's been he has shared his spirit with us definitively. Again, reclaiming the gift of our baptism. Uh, and recognizing that this subtle, good voice, this voice of peace, this voice of truth uh, that we hear throughout our days is the Lord Jesus speaking to us, um, then we can be open to that again. Stay gay, soul, chapel. Amen. You know, it's just... But sister, I, actually, that can't be overemphasized. Mm. It can't be overemphasized. Mm. I, um, I love it. You're still well, Grace. It's yeah. like my sitting down at the desk of my office, Grace. Um, yep is walking down the street grace right um and actually that's usually where yeah they're the miracles those encounters happen that's where the 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 good conversations happen yeah you know um i mean i was in the dentist chair the other day and it's like actually like i don't know maybe people don't find that place relaxing but i love it no one (laughs) he's around that no, no one's talking to you like i freak out there oh my god i'm glad you enjoy it no listen you get to like like you're reclined in a chair and like yeah but someone has the ha- hands in your mouth i know I but mean, they're that's taking, a relaxing. They're taking care of you it's you know true. like they're giving you nice <laughs> you know <I> don't, yeah <laughs> but literally and again this is this is just a couple of days ago it's yeah i'm i'm reclined and like yeah i'm i'm receiving major graces from the lord you know what i mean like <laughs> i'm not i'm not getting i believe there was something i was yeah. kind of pondering and like looking for answers and there i am and you're you're able to just put your mind and heart on the Lord, yep. and and there it is. You're receiving that grace, and cool. yeah, you're right. It's awkward. I've got fists in my mouth, and like <laughs> people tell me to like you know spritz and show sh- sh- whatever. <laughs> um, but like, hmm. why not let him find us? Amen. Um, and this gospel is just a, is just an awesome invitation to that. Yeah, um, you know that we don't want to look too far in Lent. We want to stay uh, stay with the people, the relationships, the circumstances, reality. Yeah. Um, and actually seek to observe our reality more through God's eyes. Mm-hmm. See reality through God's eyes. Mm-hmm. And in that, yeah, light will break in. Christ will break in. Mm-hmm. New life will break in. Mm-hmm. Um, our blindness will be healed. Mm-hmm. And we'll come to claim a Savior anew and be transformed. Awesome. Uh, by that encounter with him. Mm-hmm. But uh, I wonder, sister, it's, again, we never we never have enough time for the word of God. Um, but I'm going to go live this thing. Yeah. But how do I live it well? Mm-hmm. You know, how would you challenge to me as I go back into this desert? <laughs> but this week with St. Yeah. Joseph. Yeah, we got God. lots of oasis every other day. Our Lady, Annunciation, yeah. renewing our yes to the Lord. Yeah, we're packed this week. It's a gift. What should I do? Challenge? How should I take this word? I have a thought. Okay. Okay. So I'm, <laughs> let's do it. I have a challenge. Like, I know we do this in the convent as religious, but I don't know. It was on my heart a lot just to invite the consideration of um, considering as we on ramp, like these last couple of weeks heading up to Easter and a Holy Week, um, to consider to consider the possibility of daily mass, actually. Cool. Because here we have, we're in the middle of this Lenten season. Our hearts are wrenched. We're, we're aware of, um, our hungers on on many levels and our needs, um, but just recognizing that what is being unearthed here is our deepest desires and our, and my deepest need for um, for God who has made Himself accessible uh, and the strength that the Eucharist provides us at this point. You know, if you are fearing we're feeling weary, if you feel like, oh my goodness, is there any light at the end of this tunnel? Whatever, which I I know I'm tempted to feel at certain times to really rest in the reality that. Um, that Christ is in this desert with mm-hmm. our sister. We're not in this de- desert booking it on our own, mm-hmm. trying to make it to the finish line so we can just get to Easter. The body and blood of Jesus Christ is in the desert, has entered the desert, um, and we have that gift of uh, presence and particular strength and real food in the midst of the mm-hmm. desert. Um, so just a challenge to, I know it's not easy and everybody's practical realities are different, but could I consider... Uh, more frequently going to mass in the lead up to Holy Week, not just Sundays, but listen, we need it more and more. That's it. Um, can I be open to it? That's beautiful, sister. Mm. Uh, and it changes your life. It does. It does. <clears throat> what about you, sister? Do you have a challenge? Okay, here we go. Mm. I'm just trying to I'm sorry. think about all these. <laughs> sorry. Here we go. Um, just the beautiful gifts we're given this week. Yeah. Trying to bring them together. 
Uh, but I would say to spend time in prayer in Nazareth this week. We've got St. Joseph. Back to the beginning. Who is the guardian of the Savior of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, God entrusted his greatest treasures, Our Lady, little baby Jesus, to, to Joseph and his care. Um, I would entrust yourself to Joseph. Actually, um, there's really beautiful prayers uh, to St. Joseph. You can also consecrate yourself to St. Joseph. Mm-hmm. Um, place yourself under his protection, under his fatherhood. Mm-hmm. Um, he is amazing. Um, but also go to Nazareth because we've got also got Our Lady, the Annunciation this week. And the, between the two of them, yeah, they're going to help you to cherish the presence of Christ in your everyday life. Cool. Right? Like, that's what happened in Nazareth. Yeah. I mean, it, their lives were a, a whole meditation, a whole contemplation of the life of Christ mm-hmm. unfolding um, next to them, before them, um, nurturing that life, receiving that life. And so, yeah, to if you need a little oasis in the desert, go to Nazareth and you know get a get a pep talk from from Joseph awesome. or from Mary, um, or yeah, ask Our Lady to to give you the courage to give that yes to the place that uh, Jesus wants to bring this miracle uh, into your life, and yet you need courage to give your yes to give Him permission to do that. So. Spend a little time in Nazareth. Mm. Uh, imagine that place. Imagine Mary. Imagine her smile. Imagine mm. Joseph. Imagine his his care, his countenance mm. towards you. And I think you're going to take heart and find some strength here this week of Lent. Wow, beautiful, sister. Yeah. A little bit back to Nazareth. Let's go back to Nazareth. Can, can I pray? Can you please? Can you lead us in a prayer? Let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. And- Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us into the desert. We thank you for pouring out your gifts ever and always upon our minds and our hearts. We ask for every grace to make room for your grace, to move over for your life, Holy Spirit, to move over, to welcome the life of Christ, to welcome um, the power of Christ's resurrection that he uh, desires to pour into our hearts. And we ask for every grace to prepare our hearts to welcome uh, that glory, that gift, uh, that newness, that light, and that life. Uh, Blessed Mother, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. And uh, we thank you ahead of time as we say glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 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 God bless all of you. We're praying for you. God bless. Good to be with you. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.